Okay, with the cowl temporarily clamped back into position, you can see that I'm able to get the arm from the windshield wiper uh, that actuates the windshield wiper mechanism out far enough that I'm able to feed it onto the stud uh, on the motor. And so now I'm going to go and uh, uh, attempt to uh, remount that motor up underneath with this in the way. And kind of a test run to see if this is all going to work out the way I planned it. Well, another Christmas miracle. That, that worked out fine. Uh, that went in pretty easily. Um, that's all the stuff that'll be in the way, except for the hood, obviously. So, I'm afraid this is an operation that's going to require the removal of the hood in order to reach that, uh, or you're going to have to lean over the entire front end of the car or lay on the engine to do it. Um, probably just be easier to unbolt the hood and take it off. But hopefully, uh, the windshield wiper motor will never have to come out of this car. So, uh, in the occasion that it does, um... Uh, at least it can be removed. Anyway, just run a little test here to show you that uh, the arms are working okay. And uh, everything that I think would interfere is out of the way. Uh, hopefully, I haven't overlooked anything. And they always have a way of showing themselves at an inopportune time. We'll see. Time to move on to the next step. Well, it turns out while it wasn't going to interfere with the cowl itself, it was going to interfere with the um, plenum that I was going to put underneath this to guide the air from the upper grill work into this area here. So uh, I cut away most of the, uh, the bracket and also I drilled out the uh, flange that was holding the stud that it was uh, bolted to, which was about this high. Anyway, I cut it all the way back to this piece of webbing right here. And then I relieved the front webbing here with my intention of being, of putting, I recovered the stud from uh, the sheet metal plate. And I'll put that, I'll mount that onto here, and I'll go straight through this webbing right here. So it can be secured to the forward dash by a bolt here. And then also, what I'll do is I'll create a clearance hole to drill, I'll drill a clearance hole, excuse me, to um, uh, be able to put a ratchet uh, and a, uh, number 10 socket through this hole to undo this one. I also had to clearance out here because this piece of wiring harness right here, it locates, it pops right into the forward section of this uh, box. While you could probably lay it over to the side a little bit, I feel like that it being in its original location is the best place for it to be. Anyway, moving on. All right, so this is what it looks like in place. In theory, you should be able to get inside from the inside of the car now and run through this clearance hole and unbolt this from the inside. Now, granted, there will be duct work in the way here, but I intend to um, you know, have the front of the dashboard, um, this section right here, to be removable uh, for any maintenance issues that might occur with the wipers and so hopefully there'll be some some easy way to get to it you'll have to get probably remove the dash uh, pad and the, the glove box in order to get up in here which normally would be the case if you were changing this out anyway but anyway that's the uh, modification i did to the bracket and um, that gets it down nice and low and out of the way of anything else that's the last really large obstruction i had to deal with here it's uh, best to not get water in in the first place, but if you do, um, it's best to give it a route to get out. And with that in mind, um, the only really vulnerable uh, places of water infiltration now are going to be these uh, studs that protrude through the uh, upper cowl. Um, so there's a foam seal that squeezes in around the hole and seals to this shaft here. But like anything else, you know, there's a possibility that it won't be 100% waterproof. So any water that would get around this uh, stud from the outside of the car would end up rolling down to the bottom here and then wanting to drip inside the car. So I've created this little gutter um, before I close the rest of this up. It's just a piece of inch and a quarter tubing 065 wall. 
it's painted up already both sides and I have some seam sealer in there that seals around the shaft now the shaft is already sealed with this um, like it's like a butyl that comes with the kit uh, when you reinstall these uh, rebuilt uh, pivot points uh, a little tip for that is, is you put it in the freezer and get it uh, you know a little bit more rigid so you can work with it because it's pretty gooey stuff uh, trying to get it even released from the release paper is a pain in the butt but anyway I digress as they say uh, over on this side it was a little more tricky because I had a longer way to go because this pivot points way in the center of the car so I have an angled gutter that comes out here and dumps into this which there's a hole at the bottom here and that just goes outside uh, uh, I can't see it from here anyway uh, this is your fresh air intake, and this plastic plenum has a drain at the bottom of it. I don't know if you can, there you, you might, there you go, you can see it right there. Uh, so, that will be the last issue that I have uh, as far as any water penetrating from the outside of the car and driving into these areas over here. And now I'm going to uh, cap all, all of this off over here as, uh, as much as possible. Uh, of course, I'm going to leave this area open because you have to have access from the front forward section here in the engine bay. Now, one of the things I had to do when I was uh, cutting away everything was is I had to kind of cut away at this sound deadening mat that's and the heat uh, suppression mat that's inside on the inside of the front, front firewall here. So it looks a little raggedy from the top edge. So what I've done is I've created a kind of a capture it's um it's about uh let's see two and a quarter total so you got a quarter inch lip over here so it's about an inch and three quarters tall you see i've got our clearance already for my little gutter there and what that'll do is <clears throat> before i get started uh with the top closure is i've got the the, the fiberglass mat is temporarily held up with some black um uh, uh, duct tape here, a uh, gorilla tape, whatever you want to call it. And this will um, actually be what retains it. Um, let's see if I can get this up here with one hand. Probably not. Anyway, this will this will go up here. It'll be uh, welded to that edge there, and it'll create a little uh, finished edge across the front there that will capture. Uh, you know this raggedy material here and uh, neaten that up a bit so I'll paint this out and then uh, like I said I'll put this in here and tack it along here before I come across the top and cap this and enclose this area here anyway I thought I'd show you those two little rain gutters just thought I'd show you how this is starting to shape up as far as boxing this in here's that uh, lip that I showed you about to retain the edge of the um, firewall insulation um, and starting to take these panels and close this in this will all be of course seam sealed all the way around the edges here and uh, this is um, folded over into these little these little gutters here so that if any moisture gets into here uh, it should uh, roll down into these gutters and then out also this is pitched up slightly as you can see here again so that if anything does get in here it ends up rolling out uh, of the structure um, over on this side over here while I'm waiting for the paint to dry we have this plastic cold air box and you can see at one point obviously it conformed to the underside of the Challenger hood so I have to trim that down quite a bit so somewhere I put this green tape in here so I could mark it around here and take this off all the way around but being careful not to mess around with this uh, there's a uh, an attachment point here for this uh, wiring harness right here so making sure that I just don't mess with that this already I have to um, I'll have to move this a little bit maybe I'm not 100% sure but yet that's going to be uh, again reattached to the uh, cross bay stabilizer bar that stabilizes the shock towers anyway thought i'd show you i'm just uh piecing this cow closure together right now 
continuing on to the other side uh we've got that uh, boxed in now uh again sealing up underneath uh these two edges before i put these two pieces down um had to make a little dog house to accommodate that modified bracket that holds the hvac fan in um so that's just high enough to cover all of that um and i'll seal around all these edges of course i changed my approach over here since there's no uh, insulation on the face here i just simply bent this over ran some sealant underneath here to seal it to the firewall on this side over here you can see that i added my rim to cover and capture the fiberglass insulation that's on the firewall um, and I was able to tack this all the way along the top here because my fiberglass insulation was cut way down to here so I wasn't in any danger of catching it on fire. That was not the case um, for this small piece that spans this hole for the windshield wiper motor. So I had to come up with a uh, non-flammable uh, way of attaching it which is just some steel rivets so when I made this piece I uh, left three tabs attached to the back side here so that I could drill and rivet it through with steel on steel rivets and that completes uh, that so uh, can, I've got to continue uh, closing some of this in over here and I'll show you how that looks when I'm done with it here's where we are so far uh, got this closed in these uh, panels bend over and into here into these uh, little water channels um, and then they're sealed from the bottom side with seam seal which the entire perimeter is uh, fixed with seam seal around here and here the front edge is sealed up with a panel adhesive that hardens up because this area will be seen under the hood just wanted to dress that up a little bit which you can't do with this flexible stuff here because it's a little bit rubbery when it dries but that's a little dog house to accommodate the uh, mount for the uh, fan and the other rain gutter running out on the other side now it's time to make a cover for the motor um, I just had the cowl on here briefly fit up to see how much clearance I needed for it and uh, I'm gonna make a box for that okay so this is what I've come up with <clears throat> as far as the front cover for this motor um, what I've done here is I just uh, it's a uh, I folded it with a safety edge here and then I put a flange up and then across simple like that and then I bent two flanges on a piece of steel and um, shrunk it to the shape uh, of this uh, this lower firewall edge and um, what that ends up giving me is this little this little ridge here which allows me to grab the bottom side here and then this ridge pushes into the insulation and seals that up pretty good over here I have added a little a retainer ledge over here you can see that it's both bent up on the top a little bit and then it's also bent up on the bottom of this retainer ridge and the reason for that is is there's no way to secure the back of this box once this cowl is on so I have to have something that will go under and grab this lip here so this lip is about 3 16 of an inch deep and so I have that in the in the back over there to accomplish that task hopefully um, I've also put a, a bead roll in the face of this to run my wiring harness up through into where the um, the motor plugs in over on this end here so I'll be running the the wiring harness up here and then in over there so that should accommodate that hopefully it won't be too thick there's only there's four wires but they're pretty heavy wires so this just fits on I'd already bent a lip up on this surface over here and this piece fits over top of the lip and then feeds on like that and it'll screw through the face and I'm gonna add another screw to the top side here um, when this is <clears throat> when the uh, entire thing is in for the last time with the cowl completed um, I'll go around and I'll seal up all of these edges with uh, silicone as to prevent any uh, you know smells from the, the uh, engine compartment from getting into this area here underneath this this cover 
because this is uh, directly leads into the inside because of the, the wiper actuator arm that has to uh, reach up and uh, grab the pivot points. Anyway, so that's my solution hopefully for that. Um, I'll have to do a little more sealing around here because this little rain channel crossed right over my box and there's a little bit of an opening here so that's got to be sealed up in the back also so hopefully that'll solve the problem of isolating that from the rest of the car and like I said it'll be sealed up uh, similar to this and um, if it ever has to be maintenance while well, the silicone will just have to be cut with a knife and uh, so the cover can be pulled back off All right, moving away from the cal for a little bit because I've got some epoxy to seal these back corners up, uh, setting up, and that's a long, uh, a long pop time on that stuff. So uh, I'll just lately walk away from that so I don't get a bunch of goo on me, and start looking at uh, what I have to do for my HVAC uh, duct work up here. Um, when I was initially fitting the car down onto the uh, chassis uh, with the subframe of the dashboard in place there were two little towers and these two little towers have little tabs on them that locate um, one side of the existing uh, ductwork the vent that comes out here that blows towards the side glass that would keep your side glass clear um, they look like this when I cut them off and obviously they're they're too large to go back in the way they are out of the way here for a minute whereas that's where it's going to supposed to fit so I've trimmed this one down and I'm getting ready to reattach it to the frame as a start point of where I want to locate the ducting because I want to put the ducting back to its original location so you see this one here will fit on top of this tower now it's able to stand straight up in the hole and this is the location where the ductwork will screw down to there's this location then there's also uh, these two locations here where the ductwork also screws down so that it keeps it pressed down and into these outlets on the AC box anyway um, I gotta weld these back on and that's my start point for this little project all right so you can see we've got 50 pounds of stuff going into a five pound bag here so before I can do anything as far as seeing uh, how I'm going to fit most of this in here um, I had to attach all the major components together even if this is only ends up being temporary I don't know if this is going to be in a way of the gauge panel or anything else but for now this is the this is the intake and the output for the side glass uh, defogger and this is the um, output for the middle of the console the heat exhaust at the center and then also on the sides here this duct goes around here and uh, uses the same intake there and channels that this way there's no defrosters in this uh, bank of stuff but um, what I intend to do here is now that I've got this connected together, maintaining all of my uh, input and output locations, uh, I'll be able to cut this away and uh, see how I can modify it uh, to fit into this little tiny space. We'll see how that goes. All right, so that's what's left. Uh, not a lot, but we've preserved our outlet here preserved our outlet here preserved our outlet here uh, we've got both of our intakes contacting the foam right now so now the job at hand is to connect the outputs or the inputs without getting in the way of anything else we'll see how that goes all right the first uh, connect the gazoink we're going to put in here is this is the the intake for this little uh, side uh, blower that does the side windows now the way this is configured presently is this one's on top 
here and then this larger one comes underneath. We're going to have to reverse that. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to establish the floor of that first, which I had this in the car and I marked it off. This is the bottom. This is as low as the duct can be. So this will be the floor of the duct. We have, we're going to run it straight across. We're going to go past this. We've clearance this. So don't worry about that for now. And we're going to go right into the bottom side of this. We're going to pop out somewhere in this neighborhood over here. And that's going to establish the floor of that duct. So it's going to go underneath now um, that uh, larger duct. And then we'll have to establish a connection with our larger duct. All right, this is what I mean by the floor of the duct. In other words, here's the air incoming. And it's going to have to make a sharp turn out of here instead of going all the way up here, all the way across and into the... Uh, to this plenum over here uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up an opening right here and I'm going to run this duct all the way over here and then it pops out it will pop out on the bottom side where that Clico is there'll be an opening right on the bottom side here and that basically connects the A to B on that particular duct and it puts the duct below this uh, duct so I can make a, a large enough duct to connect these two anyway that's where I'm at on this okay here's step two which is the sidewall of the duct work on the back trying to kill a couple of birds with one stone so to speak by damming up this uh, the side of this uh, remnant of this duct over here at the same time, I'm creating this piece because I didn't want to take away this little webbing here, uh, which is attaching everything together and maintaining its relationship to the other ductwork. So I just went ahead and uh, bent this piece of sheet metal over in two flanges like that, and we'll try to seal it up later. Anyway, so that's what that looks like. As you can see, it's going to connect this input duct all the way over to we're going to cut an outlet right in here and that's going to hopefully run the air up and to the side window i will cut this down about to here and cap the top of it off uh, i may or may not leave it attached to this i think i will leave it attached to that although it is attached to this other duct here it's good to have a two two point location uh, to hold something stable Anyway, that's where we're at with this. With three sides of the duct done now, I've got the inner and the outer and the bottom done. I pulled it off so it's just a little bit easier to build this last little piece, which is going to ramp up here to guide the air into that uh, duct over there. Also, I have to cut this opening over here into the side uh, before I can put this on there permanently. All right, I just thought I'd show you the finished piece before I reassemble it to the plastic bits over here. Um, this is the exit. Here's the entrance for the air, which is going to close off this area here, which I just cut out. And it's sealed up with this uh, aluminum, aluminum uh, uh, HVAC tape for ducts. Uh, not duct tape. It's actually an aluminum tape. Very sticky stuff. Good stuff. Anyways... Um, yeah, that's it. Only five more of these to do. Well, it's always good to test things before you go ahead with the next phase. <clears throat> so, obviously you can see what happened here. This box was not going to uh, work with this, uh, this uh, windshield wiper mechanism. Um, so, I'm going to have to modify it. Uh, get it to clear. Keep an eye on... Uh, where everything else is. Got a big knot of wires I have to work around here. There's also some plugs that have to be plugged into the, the gauge package from the back side. So once they're plugged in, they can't be interfering with any of these ducts coming across here. So I'm going to have to try and modify uh, this uh, piece here or something similar to it in order to carry the air from this box here all the way over to this other box that uh, comes out over here. Uh, it's 
high wire act, that's for sure. Okay, so we got some modifications here. The first modification we did was we uh, we cut and tapered this duct on the back side over here so that it would miss the uh, arms that uh, run the uh, windshield wipers. Second thing we did was we scalloped this severely here also to help with the uh, clearance for the windshield wiper arms. Now with doing that, that tapered this down to a very small uh, 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 duct work here. So in order to increase the volume again, um, I went ahead and cut the front off of it and bumped it out about another half of an inch here, which is about all I have in the way of clearance to that big bundle of wires that I showed you previously. And I'll put this in there and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. But now it's uh, hopefully out of the way of everything. My next big chore, of course, is going to be to join this inlet and this outlet together. But I have to be careful not to get involved with any of the areas where the gauges plug in so that's another hazard i have to keep an eye on so got the dashboard cover upside down over there with the gauge package in it so i can kind of fit it up there too at the same time and see what's going on but let me put this in and i'll bring you back okay we've got this uh, reinstalled temporarily so that i could uh, show you what these clearances look like now this is the area that I showed you that big knot of wires and there was just enough room here for me to widen out that duct and not interfere with this big knot of uh, knot of wires but I also got to keep the duct that joins this above this wire knot but also keep it from interfering with plugging in these large plugs that have to go into the back of the um, the uh, instrument panel so I've got those things to avoid uh, it's kind of hard to see with this brace in the way, but um, I have to keep this brace uh, intact because it's helping to keep the relationship between this and this proper so that later on when I go to put my dash, that'll all line up. But anyway, my windshield wiper's clear now, so um, it's not as much clearance as I would like, but... You know what? It's working. On to the next step. All right, you can see this is the dash pad. I've got the um, gauge cluster in dash pad. I also have the vents, uh, outlets, finish vent outlets in both of the uh, locations so that I could take my whole uh, ductwork assembly and mount it in here upside down connected to the points where it's going to outflow and now this is my gauge cluster and you can see here's where the plugs are here and here I've got plenty of room over here but I've got to make sure that there's enough room for the plug and the wire to wrap over so I've got an alleyway that goes from here to about over here and it has to be above this piece of channel that's already uh, uh, fastened to this piece that's that brace that I have there. I'll be replacing that brace with the actual ductwork. But you can see there's not a whole lot of room there to make the connection. Also, I have a lot of room um, down here because this domes up pretty high, this, this gauge cluster cover. But where it reintroduces itself to the duct on both sides, it disappears. It fades, fades away to nothing. So I have to uh, be back at this level. Uh, by the time I get over to here on either side. So basically I've got this little alleyway to work with um, to put that connection together. So I got a little bit of a chicken and an egg scenario here. I have to remove this top brace in order to put my floor in for my duct that goes from here to here because this is going to be the opening on the top side over here where it's going to uh, plunge into. And then over here, of course, I've got to clear this area out a little bit because this is the area also where this is going to plunge into. So I've got to remove this brace on the top, but this brace is keeping the relationship between this opening and this opening straight. So what I went ahead and did first was I walled off the back of this box, 
which had to be done anyway. So you can see this is curved in order to clear the, um, the mechanism for the windshield wipers. And um, I put this temporary brace uh, pop riveted onto the back with some aluminum pop rivets. Uh, it's kind of a strong back so that when I release this uh, top brace over here, this thing won't go all over the map. It's only attached presently by this little uh, plastic weld right here between these two openings. So this thing has, if you uh, take that brace off, will it'll hinge like this. So anyway, that's how we're moving along with this thing. So here we are uh, uh, with the secondary duct that's going to run over and above the first one that I put in. You can see this one here runs along the side here, turns up and goes in to this upper piece over here and it exits through this hole over here and into this area. I cut the top out of this one here and dammed up the back side where the air normally would flow into this duct work. I created a closure that both closes the back side and also starts the back wall of the upper duct which sits right on top of the lower duct which, but it's a little bit bigger and then this dives off into this hole over here. Now uh, this is the area where it's closest to the top of the dashboard so I'm just going to relieve this down just a little bit more because right now it sits right on that when I set it over there into the uh, the dash pad. Hopefully it won't be uh, interfering in any way when I go put the dash pad back on but it's right up there. Um, so anyway then I'll have to do a closure over the top of this entire thing and that hopefully will complete the duct work until such times I find out there's some interference somewhere and I'll be cutting back out but for now, that's where I'm at. All right, so here's the completed piece. Um, it's got the lower duct right there going along, popping up into the upper section over here. And then it's got this upper duct, which feeds in from here, blows out through the dashboard, and also gets diverted down this pipe here all the way down into this chamber here and out this uh, area here. Uh, let's see if I can show you how it fits in here. Okay, so that's it in place. Hopefully everything clears the way it needs to and we can move on to the other side. Um, but that's it for this week. I uh, appreciate you watching and hanging with me. This is the most complicated part of the car. Uh, this takes the longest. There's a lot to sort out here. I still have to, like I said, do the other side. I have to do defrosters. There's still issues of how the uh, wipers will clock when they're in the resting location. So uh, I'm going to be lingering a little bit here to get this all tidied up and, uh, and finished off. Thanks for watching.